Hey everybody, welcome to the frozen Great White North. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the thermostat for my shop, and guys, that's not the outside temperature. That's the inside temperature. So if you're wondering why you haven't seen a video from me uh, in a few weeks, uh, well, the weather and my, uh, my health have not been the greatest the past two weeks. I ended up catching that flu bug going around. Uh, better from that now, but uh, this past week we've had temperatures, actual real temperatures, not wind chill, down to minus 18. Uh, today's Sunday, it's going to go down to minus 22 uh, this upcoming week and uh, hovering in the minus teens uh, for three or four days in a row. So uh, lately it's just been trying to stay warm. Uh, I'm up in the shop now, uh, you know, get, keeping a fire going, trying to get things above freezing up here. Just I'm worried about a lot of my paints and stuff freezing. So uh, at any rate, uh, just thought I'd show you that. Hello everybody and welcome back to the frozen shop. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's, been a, it's been a wild and crazy uh, winter here with the weather, but enough about that. Uh, what I want to do with this video is uh, I wish to acknowledge uh, two separate people who were kind enough to uh, send me, actually give me some, one was sent in, uh, and it's my very, very, very first viewer mail uh, from, uh, from some of the uh, subscribers here, uh, and, I, and I just wanted to acknowledge it as a way of saying thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, and what you see laid out in front of me is a whole mess of hand saws. Uh, these are a bunch of vintage hand saws, and uh, this past uh, September at uh, the Arnfest gathering, the annual Arnfest gathering, uh, a gentleman by the name of Ron Brown came up to me and uh, started uh, speaking to me that he was enjoying my channel and that he said he had something for me that he wanted to pass along uh, to me that was uh, his father's and grandfather's that he had sitting in his barn. And I followed him out to his truck in the parking lot and what you're looking at is a whole mess of vintage saws that uh, uh, he had given me and what he said was is he knew uh, based on watching my channel that I would probably have a, uh, a higher opportunity of using them and putting them back to good work uh, than he would and uh, I graciously accepted them so Ron thank you so much uh, I thanked you at that time it was great meeting you at Arnfest I, uh, I really 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 do enjoy uh, meeting everybody uh, new people as well as seeing a bunch of old friends at Arnfest every year for those of you that have not come uh, I'm, I'm telling you it's the highlight of my year every year really a great uh, gathering group of guys and girls that are uh, you know like-minded with the vintage tools and stuff very much what this entire shop is about so uh, I've got a mess of saws I got a bunch of rip saws I got a bunch of uh, uh, panel saws I got this nice little small panel saw some of them the handles aren't in the greatest uh, uh, shape but I've already begun uh, making some new handles for the ones that are going to need it. There's uh, three or four of them in here that have handles that are possibly glueable, but they're cracked to the point where I'm probably just going to go ahead and make new handles and replace them. Uh, this here is really one of my favorites. It's so cool. It's a two-man crosscut saw. Uh, these are the ones that you know they would have used one guy on each side for uh, for bucking up logs. Uh, uh, probably not for felling, but possibly because it is kind of short but more than likely for uh, bucking logs into lengths for, uh, for either uh, cutting them up uh, and for hewing as well as obviously for uh, firewood. So uh, I'm going to clean this one up. It's going to probably end up being a wall hanger uh, on the shop on display. I'm not going to be painting it or nothing crazy like that, but just uh, getting it ready for use. But, uh, you know, I have a chainsaw for, for this kind of work, and I uh, don't have enough time to mess around with uh, hand sawing logs in, uh, in the sections for firewood. It just takes too long. But uh, this will be a fantastic uh, wall hanger uh, for uh, going along with the whole theme of the uh, vintage shop. So Ron, great meeting you. Again, one of these days you got to get out here and uh, we got to do some saw milling at the mill. And uh, also uh, just wanted to thank you very much. What I'm going to do is uh, pick out a few of these uh, and uh, tune them up and keep them for myself. I'm also going to pass one or two along of these to uh, Keith Rucker, my friend, uh, who you had asked me to send a couple of these to. I just got to get around to cleaning them up enough to get a couple off to them. And uh, what I may end up doing also uh, for duplicates is uh, getting a few of them uh, back in condition, uh, refiling them, and maybe we'll have like a, 
you know, a giveaway on the channel or something down the road once I get a chance to go through these. So I definitely want to put them in the hands of someone who's going to put them to use and uh, get them back to work like they're supposed to be. So Ron, thanks a lot. So earlier in the summer, I also received an uh, email from, uh, from one of the guys who's really, he's one of my metalworking mentors uh, off of the OWWM site. Uh, and uh, his name is Jeff. Uh, he goes by Jeff and PA. And uh, Jeff, you've been a big help for me in uh, learning all about uh, you know metalworking. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know Jeff, he's a, a professional machinist. Uh, has been his entire uh, adult professional career. And uh, he had contacted me wanting to know, he had known that I had, at, at that time, had recently picked up some new tooling uh, for the Big Monarch lathe, uh, uh, tool holders, insert tool holders, and he contacted me to find out what sizes uh, that I had gotten because he wanted to send me some inserts. And uh, about a week later in the mail, I got a package from him, uh, you know, basically sending me just a whole bunch of these carbide inserts that fit the specific tooling that I have. And uh, guys, this stuff you know, can get relatively expensive. And this isn't the cheap Asian import stuff either. I mean, I got Kenamental here, Valinite, uh, uh, some made in the USA. Oh, this is made in Japan, Sumitomo, and uh, some others, more Sumitomo, and uh, more Kenamental, uh, Kenamental. So 431 and 432 tooling for CNMG. There's some DNMG tooling in several different sizes. Uh, WNMG inserts, uh, which is the, uh, the uh, you know what, let me, uh, let me bring you guys in so you can see this uh, better up close. So this here's the diamond shaped insert uh, tooling, DNMG. There's a couple of different sizes for that. You got the skinny stuff as well as the uh, wider stuff. Uh, and then uh, this is the WNMG, which is the, uh, basically, uh, it's not really triangular, I, uh, I don't really know, it's uh, this, this size right there. And uh, he sent me some tooling in uh, 431 and 432 size tooling, which is the size of the radius on the tip of the tooling. Some is for roughing, some is for finishing. And then, of course, uh, CNMG tooling, which a lot of guys use mostly. Uh, and I got that in several different sizes from him to uh, to fit several different uh, of my tool holders. So, uh, Jeff, can't thank you enough. I just wanted to acknowledge it because uh, I, I can't tell you how blown away I am by the fact that uh, someone would send this stuff to me and uh, ask for nothing in return. I just really, really, really appreciate the help here. Thanks. So, since I'm at it and I brought up Darnfest from uh, 2018, I might as well... Uh, let you guys in on some of the new stuff that I brought into the shop uh, this past year because uh, at some point you're going to see it and say hey where the heck did that come from so uh, I'm not really much of a collector when I was a kid I collected baseball and hockey cards but other than that I, I consider myself more of a user not really a collector but boy I, I think I've caught the bug on these locomotive sanders many of you probably know what these are these are belt sanders uh, and I, I, I just think that these locomotive engine style looking uh, sanders are just the coolest thing since sliced bread. And uh, this year's Iron Fest, as always, the swap meet did not disappoint. Uh, up until this point, I owned none of these. And I actually picked up all three of these. Uh, this one here is a model AR. Uh, and uh, it's just a four and a half inch uh, belt sander. thing is huge. Uh, I'm guessing... Uh, uh, probably capable of some serious, serious, serious sanding. Uh, these two guys are identical twins, but they came together. Uh, this one even had the box. The other one came in a wooden in, in a, uh, a wooden and a cardboard box. Uh, these are model 525s, and uh, they're both identical twins. They both appear to be in really good condition, and they both run. I haven't really done anything to them yet. Uh, I'm not really much into sanding in the shop. I'm more of a hand playing guy, but every once in a while you do. Uh, want to go ahead and take a belt sander to some filthy dirty uh, piece of vintage wood or something like that to clean it up before you uh, introduce it to high speed steel tooling because it'll just dull it that quickly. But more than anything I really bought these as a start to a potential collection of hanging them on the wall. I want to make sure I get them running correctly so that they are usable but more than likely they're just going to be something that uh, I enjoy looking at, a, on, at on a shelf inside the shop. Definitely going to clean them up, uh, change the oil, get them uh, uh, re-greased if bearings need to be replaced or anything like that we'll end up going through them 
But uh, I just wanted to go ahead and share these with you. And I've also got some other things this year that I picked up at the swap meet at Arnfest. So let me bring that stuff in and I'll show you and share you all that uh, stuff as well. So another fantastic find at Arnfest this year. Uh, if you guys are woodworkers with table saws, you probably recognize what this is. Uh, these are two T-squares for uh, Biesemeyer uh, commercial length fence. And uh, I'm always on the lookout for these because I like to do restorations. And uh, when I rebuilt my Powermatic 66 table saw, uh, it did not come with a fence. Uh, the fence that was on it was just some aftermarket piece of junk that I ended up throwing out. Uh, and I ended up having to buy a brand new Biesemeyer fence for it. And uh, it was $550 and that's going back like six years ago. So they're expensive. So uh, one of the benefits of getting to a swap meet early is you get early pickets. And uh, I was there right when the gates opened as guys were still setting up. And uh, I saw some uh, angle iron, what looked like angle iron, leaning against the truck. I says, I got to run over there. And sure enough, uh, one of the guys had not one, but two complete sets of not only the, uh, the T-squares. Uh, they're in rough shape. These are going to need to be changed. This one doesn't, it didn't have any at all. Uh, but I got all the hardware with them, the handles, uh, one for each. I even got a spare Bakelite handle for, uh, you know, for one of them because uh, the handle on this one's broke. I uh, got a ton of hardware, the pointers, everything. But I also got the uh, front and rear angle rails as well as the sliding, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the rectangular tube steel. So uh, they're, they're basically, uh, one is in better shape than the other, but two complete fence systems, guys. I paid $100 for all of it. So that's uh, $1,100 uh, of uh, what you would have to pay to uh, replace them new. These are going to need to get uh, sandblasted and repainted, uh, make some new fences for them. But uh, other than that, I've got a, uh, a Whitney uh, number 77 uh, uh, saw that's been uh, sitting in the uh, other building for quite some time that is going to get uh, basically restored and put back to use. And uh, it came with the original uh, fence that's on there but I, I you know when I'm working I really like to uh, work with the t-square fence as well so I will mount one of these on there and then I'm gonna end up saving the other one for a future project because uh, uh, the price was certainly right so I thought I would uh, also share this with you as well so one other thing I wanted to share with you that uh, came into the shop over this uh, past uh, very recently uh, my Christmas present for my loving wife thank you Susie Q uh, she ended up buying me five Hewitt boxes. I've been complaining for a long time about how I got drill bits laying everywhere and I've got my taps and dies. I'm constantly rifling through the drawers of my toolbox, uh, my machinist box, trying to find the right size tap and then the right size drill to go with it. Well, she went ahead and bought me uh, all five of these boxes. Uh, this one is for end mills, eighth inch up to one inch. Uh, this bottom one here is uh, fractional taps, uh, all the way from quarter 20. Uh, on up to 1 inch 12 and I have uh, yet to put my taps in here but uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these organized because I basically have a whole bunch of these in different sizes and this is going to be a great way to have them all in one location and then of course drill bits, uh, letter drills, uh, wire gauge drills uh, numbered uh, you know 1 through 60, no, what is it here, 1 through 60 yes uh, this is uh, letter A through Z and uh, of course uh, fractional drill bits from 1 16th all the way up to half inch and I've already transferred all my drill bits into these so these are already well stocked I've got uh, just about all the sizes that are in here I ended up having a old rotary union twist I only had half of the two uh, carousel set and I was unable for six or seven years to find the other one so I ended up selling it to a guy who I knew had the other one but was unwilling to part with it so uh, I ended up uh, getting rid of that and uh, moved it on and completed his set and now I'm uh, going to be working out of these. Uh, these things are fantastic. I'm probably going to add, they've got a couple other boxes uh, for reamers and a few other things that I have in a lot of bulk that are basically sitting over there behind the bench in cardboard boxes and I need to get them organized as well. So uh, you know, stuff like this is just going to help tremendously uh, keeping the shop organized as I do more and more metal work. Uh, and I've got a lot of that coming up because I've got some parts to make uh, for my business 
uh, rebuilding one of the mud jacking pumps that I'm working on right now, and you guys will uh, see some of that in upcoming videos. So we got some metal working, we got some welding, and of course I still want to get on with a few of the projects that have been started. Uh, I've been getting emails from guys going, hey, what's going on with the smoker? Hey, what's going on with the uh, Yates American Bandsaw? So of course we're going to start uh, getting uh, some of those projects wrapped up as well, and uh, those will be upcoming in future videos. So uh, I think I've made this video long enough. One last thing. One other Arnfest find that I just flat out could not pass up because I didn't have any of these. Uh, this is a made in the USA set of uh, transfer punches from uh, 16th inch, uh, which is you know, kind of, actually no, 3 seconds of an inch, all the way on up to half inch. And uh, these come in real handy for locating uh, drilling holes and stuff like that in steel. And you can use them in wood too, because I already have. Uh, it's a great way of uh, locating holes. So uh, at any rate, 10 bucks. Uh, pretty hard to pass up. Uh, made in the USA tooling for a full set for uh, 10 bucks. So at any rate, I just wanted to give you this uh, real quick shop update and uh, thank you guys for cont your continued support. Uh, if you're not a subscriber already, uh, please hit that subscribe button. And very recently, guys, uh, just like in the last week, we've picked up, uh, the channel's picked up somewhere between 250 and 300 subscribers. I don't know where you're coming from, but I sure hope uh, you guys are enjoying the videos. There's going to be a lot more to come. Uh, more sawmill videos outside once the weather breaks. Right now it's just insanely cold out. This is going to be a really rough week. Uh, so if you guys are in the northern half of the country, uh, you know, stay warm because it's going to be dangerously cold outside. Minus 22 uh, without wind chill. Uh, with wind chills in the minus 40 to minus 50 uh, range, that's dangerous, dangerous weather. So keep your pets inside. If you guys have animals, keep an eye on them. Uh, because uh, this is the kind of weather that kills. So uh, everybody be safe, uh, and uh, we'll see you soon on the next video.